So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, people joining from UN Web TV stream and uh, journalists joining this press conference from the Palais de la Nation uh, in Geneva. We welcome you to the launch of the United in Science 2021 report. My name is Paul Edgerton, Chef de Cabinet of WMO, and I'll be moderating this event today. United in Science is a multi-organization, high-level compilation of the latest climate science information and is published in advance of the UN General Assembly and brings high-level climate science information uh, at a global level, so providing a unified assessment on the state of our Earth system. This is actually the third edition of this report. And the report covers greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere from WMO, global greenhouse emissions and budgets from the Global Carbon Project, emissions gap from the United Nations Environment Program, global climate in 2017 to 2021, and up to 2025 from the WMO UK Met Office. Also, it provides highlights of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, six assessment report, the physical science basis, sea level rise and coastal impacts from the World Climate Research Program, and finally also heat waves, fires, and air pollution with collaboration with the World Health Organization. So first of all, uh, this press conference, we're very privileged to hear a, a message from the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, uh, who will um, present uh, his statement on the report. We have reached a tipping point on the need for climate action. The disruption to our climate and our planet is already worse than we thought, and it is moving faster than predicted. Yet. We are far from meeting the goals of the five-year-old Paris Agreement. This report shows just how far off course we are. The past five-year period is among the hottest on record. We continue to destroy the things on which we depend for life on Earth. Ice caps and glaciers continue to melt. Sea level rise is accelerating. The ocean is dying and biodiversity is collapsing. This year, fossil fuel emissions have bounced back to pre-pandemic levels. Greenhouse gas concentrations continue to rise to new record highs, and the results are plain to see, affecting health, lives, and livelihoods everywhere. We now have five times the number of recorded weather disasters than we had in 1970, and they are seven times more costly. Even the most developed countries have become vulnerable. Hurricane Ida recently cut power to over a million people in New Orleans, and New York City was paralyzed by a record-breaking rain that killed at least 50 people in the region. Unprecedented floods devastated parts of Western Europe, and an exceptional and dangerous heat wave killed hundreds in the northwest of the United States and Western Canada. These events would have been impossible without human-caused climate change. Costly fires, floods, and extreme weather events are increasing everywhere. These changes are just the beginning of worse to come. Unless there are immediate, rapid, and large-scale reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, we will be unable to limit global heating to 1.5 degrees Celsius, and the consequences will be catastrophic. This report by the United Nations and Global Scientific Partner Organization is clear. We really are out of time. We must act now to prevent further irreversible damage. COP26 this November must mark that turning point. By then, we need all countries to commit to achieve net zero emissions by the middle of this century and to present clear, credible, long-term strategies to get there. We need all countries to present more ambitious and achievable national determined contributions that will together cut global greenhouse gas emissions by 45% by 2030 compared to 2010 levels. Nothing less will do. This report makes clear that our climate has already changed and the climate-related risks are increasingly, increasing rapidly. It is urgent that we step up efforts to protect people and their livelihoods, particularly in the most vulnerable countries that have been hit simultaneously by climate disruption, COVID-19, and crashing levels of debt. This is why we must urgently secure a breakthrough on adaptation and resilience so that vulnerable communities can manage these growing risks. And that means adequate finance, beginning with developed countries delivering on their pledge to mobilize 100 billion US dollars annually for mitigation and adaptation in the developing world. 
I expect all these issues to be addressed and resolved at COP26. Our future is at stake. Thank you. Thank you. We'd like to thank the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres for that statement from the United in Science. I'd like to introduce you now to Professor Petri Talas, who is the Secretary General of the World Meteorological Organization, and he will give you a presentation on the United Science Report key results. Professor Talas. So welcome also on my behalf, and, uh, and uh, thanks to Secretary General Guterres for his uh, words, and, uh, and he has been actually requesting us to provide uh, these reports. Uh, the first one was uh, published uh, uh, three years ago when he organized uh, a high-level climate summit uh, for the heads of uh, states uh, in New York uh, attached to the uh, General Assembly. And uh, thereafter we have uh, had a habit to publish these reports uh, on annual basis. Uh, just before the General Assembly to motivate the heads of state uh, who cl classically gather in New York uh, uh, to, to, to mitigate the climate, uh, climate change. And, uh, and, and as, as uh, uh, Paul Egerton said, uh, this is a joint venture of, uh, of several UN agencies and, uh, and also Global Carbon Project and, uh, and the UK Met, uh, Met Office. And I will now show you some slides. Uh, 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 where I will summarize uh, what, what are the contents of this, uh, this uh, report. Could I get the slides up, please? Can I get the next one? I don't see it here, by the way. So, uh, so we've, I will summarize uh, uh, the, the findings of this report uh, a little bit uh, later, uh, but, uh, but uh, uh, First, uh, there was some thinking that uh, because of these uh, COVID lockdowns, we would have seen a positive uh, uh, development in, in real atmosphere, but that's not uh, the, the case. Uh, uh, I will now show what, what happened uh, last year. Can I get the next slide, please? So, so this is demonstrating how the emissions have been, carbon emissions have been evolving during the past, uh, past uh, decades, and you can see that there has been a fairly steady increase, and uh, last year we estimated that there was 5.6 percent drop in emissions. Uh, and uh, since the lifetime of carbon dioxide is so long, this one year's anomaly in emissions doesn't uh, change the big uh, picture. We saw some improvements in air quality, uh, the short lived gases uh, uh, which are affecting air quality. Uh, we, we, we saw positive uh, evolution there, but uh, but uh, now we have returned uh, more or less back to the 2019 emission levels. Next, please. And here are uh, some uh, greenhouse gas measurements, uh, carbon dioxide measurements, uh, first for the most recent years on the, on the left-hand side. And you can see very steady increase. And uh, on the right-hand side, you can see the whole old time series from the late 50s when, when uh, U.S. Uh, NOAA started their measurements uh, at Mauna Loa. And this is what we measure at all of the stations because the very long lifetime of, uh, of, of carbon, carbon dioxide. So, so this, uh, this uh, uh, short, short uh, drop in emissions didn't uh, change the big picture. We should see such uh, drops uh, happening on annual basis to be successful in climate uh, mitigation. Next, please. And, um, and, and the last uh, five years period has been the warmest uh, uh, five-year period on record since, uh, since we started uh, measurements in 1850. And on the map here you can see uh, uh, where, where, uh, where we saw uh, more than average uh, warming, and that's, that's typically Arctic area. Uh, Europe uh, has been also exposed to higher uh, increase of temperatures and, and Asia in general. Then we see some anomalies here, especially in, in southern hemisphere ocean areas, and there's also one anomaly south of uh, Greenland and Iceland, and that's related to the, uh, to the slowing down of so-called Gulf Stream, which is bringing warm air from Caribbean towards uh, Europe, uh, but, uh, but uh, overall warming in Europe and Arctic has been so, uh, so massive that, uh, that we don't see a major impact of that uh, at the European continent, but in the ocean area, that's uh, that's happening. 
And we have uh, several centers worldwide which are estimating what has happened, happened during the, uh, since 1850. And you can see a, a couple of uh, European centers here, a uh, few North American ones and, uh, and a Japanese one. And uh, depending how you calculate this, uh, this warming so far, uh, the range is from uh, 1.06 degree, degrees to 1.26 uh, degrees uh, warming. So about 1.5 to 1.1 to 1.3 to 1 is the range of, uh, of warming so far. In IPCC report, which was published uh, a few weeks ago, they, they t talked about 1.1, 1 .1, uh, but here we have also, also data from the most recent uh, years, which were not uh, included in the IPCC report. Next, please. And um, as uh, Antonio Guterres said, uh, we have started seeing more extreme events, and, uh, and of course we have also this natural variability in atmosphere, so you, 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 we cannot uh, tell that everything that we observe is uh, because of climate change. Uh, but, for example, these two uh, events that we are shown on the screen, uh, they have been clearly linked to climate change. Uh, first, we had this uh, uh, temperature anomaly in, in, in uh, Western uh, Canada and the United States, where we were up to 50, 15 degrees uh, uh, warmer temperatures than normally, and, and that led to uh, record-breaking uh, forest fires and, uh, and, and ma ma major health problems, uh, uh, especially among elderly people. And, uh, and, and, and also this uh, flooding event in, uh, in western Germany, uh, that was very unusual and led also to uh, almost 200 casualties. Uh, and because of climate change, these kind of events that used to happen every 100 years, they may happen nowadays uh, every 20 years and, uh, and in the future even more often. So, so the risk of uh, these kind of e events is uh, growing because of uh, climate change. But we shouldn't explain all of this kind of uh, variability with climate, uh, climate change factors. Next, please. And if we compare uh, this, uh, what has happened during the past uh, 100 years, uh, that's, that's really uh, very, very unusual. Uh, we can go back uh, with uh, not measurements, but uh, indirect ways of uh, estimating uh, what has happened to temperatures. Uh, we can go back uh, 100,000 years, and, uh, and the last 100 years uh, is, is, is clearly an anomaly in, in, in that uh, time frame. So, so we haven't seen such, uh, such warming and such warm uh, century uh, for the past uh, 100,000 years. And here, here, here uh, I'm, I'm showing what has happened during the past uh, 2,000 years. Next, please. And, and these uh, changes, they are having also impacts on, on human health. Uh, and we have learned that uh, the frequency of heat waves is uh, growing. And, uh, and, 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 and especially uh, people who have been uh, casualties of this COVID pandemic, uh, same type of people are also sensitive to changes in, in, in temperature patterns. And uh, these heat wave events uh, cause mortality and, and especially these uh, elderly and, uh, and, and sick people who have died of COVID, uh, they are also typically dying uh, because of uh, heat waves. And, and on the map uh, on the right-hand side, you can see that, uh, that we, have, uh, we have seen also an increase of, uh, of, uh, of forest fire risk, and, uh, and, and you can see lots of color in Asia, uh, in Africa, and also in both, uh, both Americas and, uh, and also in Russia. And, and during the recent years, we have seen record-breaking forest fires uh, in Russia and also in Brazil and, and, and also in the United uh, States, uh, as, as I already, already said. Next, please. And uh, the sea heat waves, uh, 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 drought events, uh, flooding events, uh, and, um, and, and, and uh, storm events uh, uh, by 2050, 2060, if we are successful with mitigation. But certain parameters uh, will continue to change also during the coming hundreds of years, because we have already uh, such high concentrations of uh, especially carbon dioxide in the, in the atmosphere. And that's why the sea level rise, uh, melting of glaciers and uh, melting of snow and ice will continue for, for centuries. And, and here you can see that uh, the estimates of sea level rise uh, uh, for, for this uh, century, they are higher than they used to be. We estimate that it, it, the range is uh, from 
point zero to point six meters uh, besides the, uh, the the sea level rise, uh, which has been about twenty six uh, centimeters so far. So altogether, we we are uh, supposed to reach uh, half meter to one meter uh, by the end of this uh, this century, and uh, and, uh, and 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 then by two thousand three hundred, by the end of next century, uh, we may get. Uh, up to three meters uh, more, and this is uh, an area where we have lots of uncertainty, uh, and the uncertainty is very much related to the fact that uh, we don't know what's going to happen to the Antarctic glacier, where we have the biggest uh, mass of ice uh, worldwide, and uh, and in the worst case we could see uh, up to two meters uh, sea level rise by the end of this century if the melting of uh, of the Antarctic glacier happens in a speedier speedier manner. The good news from the recent IPCC report is that uh, this worst uh, scenario that we used to have in the previous reports, uh, uh, they are not very likely anymore. So, so we, it, it seems that we can we can somehow mitigate climate change, but uh, but so far uh, so far we haven't uh, uh, we, we are not on a, on a track towards uh, Paris Agreement uh, targets. Next, please. And uh, and there's a likelihood that uh, we would see uh, we would hit the lowest uh, low limit of. Uh, Paris Agreement uh, 1.5 degrees uh, during the pa coming f five years, and, and, and there's 40 percent uh, chance that one year uh, within the coming five years would be would be already 1.5 degree warmer on temporary basis, uh, on permanent basis. That may happen happen much uh, later. Next, please. And, uh, and 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 finally, I would like to say that. Uh, that we are not yet on track uh, towards the Paris uh, 1.5 to 2 degrees limits, uh, although positive things have started to happen. And, and the political interest to mitigate climate change is clearly growing, uh, but to be successful in, 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 in this uh, effort, uh, we have to start acting now. We cannot wait uh, for decades to act. Uh, we have to uh, start acting already during this, uh, this decade, and that's one of the challenges uh, for the forthcoming COP26 meeting to raise the ambition level and, uh, and to be able to reach uh, 1.5 to 2 degrees, which would be the best for the welfare of, uh, of, of mankind and, uh, and our planet. Next, please. And here uh, we are summarizing the, the results of this uh, report. Uh, so so, uh, so we, are, we, we have to raise the ambition level of mitigation and uh, and, uh, and and uh, and we have started seeing events which are which have been unusual in the past that they are becoming more more usual because of climate change and uh, and, uh, and and this anomaly in emissions uh, uh, last year uh, is over and and we are more or less back to the uh, 2019 emission emission uh, levels and, uh, and, uh, and 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 this health uh, health case uh, covid uh, uh, doesn't have a very strong link to, to, to any weather patterns. The only link that we have found is uh, is related to air pollution. So the polluted uh, areas have seen more, more mortality than other other parts of the world. And sea level rise has been accelerating, and this will continue for for centuries. Uh, and, um, and, uh, and and there's a chance that we would uh, hit uh, the low limit of Paris Agreement uh, during the coming. Uh, uh, five years, and, and that, that's that's forty percent chance for that. This was all from from my side, and I'm open for questions or comments from your side. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Tallis, for uh, that detailed presentation of uh, United in Science 2021. And uh, as we said at the beginning, this is a cooperation with several uh, UN agencies and. Uh, academic institutions, and uh, we just want to also thank uh, the contributions of this report and also the lead team with Professor Jörg Lutebacher, who is the WMO chief scientist and also is joining on the, on the Zoom link. Um, we're now going to uh, ask for any questions from uh, journalists on the press conference, and uh, could you please raise your hand uh, if you would wish to ask for, um, for the floor. So, uh, first of all, I'll go to um, the Swiss news agency, uh, Laurent Serio, uh, please. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, thank you, Secretary General. 
Uh, you mentioned an, an increasing interest uh, in, uh, in climate action. Um, when you assess what you have uh, heard or read so far from the different member states, how do you assess the preparation for the COP? Uh, does it seem satisfactory or, or are you, aren't you confident on, on what they might achieve? Uh, uh, is there a need for even stronger preparation for the, the gathering? Thank you. Thank you. Very good question. So, as, as I said, uh, we have heard uh, encouraging news. Uh, uh, it seems that, uh, that quite many countries worldwide are aiming at becoming carbon neutral by 2050 or 2060, which is, uh, which is the aim of, uh, of China. And, uh, and, uh, and the good news is that we also have uh, both the technological and, uh, and, uh, and financial means, means to be successful with uh, climate mitigation, even, even uh, theoretically reach uh, the low limit of uh, Paris Agreement, 1.5 uh, degrees. Uh, but uh, but uh, what, what, what needs to happen is that we have to start acting, acting during this uh, decade already. So we cannot uh, wait for several decades to, to act, uh, uh, otherwise we will lose, lose the chance to reach uh, to this Paris uh, 1.5 to 2 degrees uh, limits. And, and there's, there's going to be lots of pressure on countries that they would uh, make commitments for the coming, coming 10 years uh, to, to, to mitigate, uh, have ambitious mitigation plans for un, until 2030. So that's, uh, that, that's our challenge. And, and so far, uh, we haven't heard uh, enough such commitments that we would, uh, we would uh, be heading towards, uh, towards the Paris, uh, Paris limits. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but I would say that the, uh, uh, the political interest to mitigate is, uh, is, uh, is higher than ever. Thank you. Just to remind you, if you want to ask the floor, please raise your hand on, on the chat. We're now going to uh, Jamie Keaton from Associated Press. Uh, over to you, Jamie. Good morning, uh, Professor Tallis. Nice to see you again. I hope you can hear me. Um, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Um, sorry, I had some difficulty with this the other day. Um, I wanted to know if you could just be very specific. Well, obviously, this is a compilation of a lot of different science that has been out there already. I'm just wondering, in terms of the projections, what, what specifically is new in this report compared to the IPCC report, or is it really just more of a, a re-, re um, re uh, sort of assessing the, that data. And then the second question just has to do with what you just touched upon. How optimistic are you that countries are going to be able to get their act together between now and 2030 to help meet the Paris uh, targets? Yes. Uh, so so uh, IPCC uh, reports, uh, they are, these main reports, they are published typically every seven years. and. Uh, and, uh, and, and they are uh, dealing with the peer-reviewed literature, which has been published in the, in the, in the peer-reviewed journals uh, during the past, uh, past years. And, uh, and, uh, and, and with, uh, in, in this report, we are also including what we have observed during the recent uh, years. Uh, the IPCC report uh, information is uh, typically lagging couple, at least a couple of years behind uh, what's happening in real atmosphere. And, and this, in this report, we are summarizing what has happened in the real atmosphere. And, uh, and for example, we have estimated uh, what has been the impact of uh, omis emission drops uh, during these uh, this, uh, pandemic uh, lockdowns. Uh, we have also estimated uh, what has been the uh, contribution of climate change, uh, the most recent uh, 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 Disasters like the like the uh, forest fires in in Canada and uh, and, and USA and uh, and flooding event in, in 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 Germany and and then we have also estimated what is the likelihood that uh, that we would uh, hit uh, the low limit of uh, Paris uh, Paris uh, Agreement and and uh, and then we have uh, of course also information on on greenhouse gases uh, until until uh, this year and and also information on, on, on temperature changes until, until this year, which, which wasn't the case in IPCC report. So, so that's, uh, that's the thing. And we are very much echoing the same message as, uh, 
as the IPCC report, and, uh, and, and there were some, some uh, thinking that uh, the COVID lockdown would have had a uh, positive impact on the real, in the real, real atmosphere, which is not, not the case. And, uh, and, and as has already said, uh, the, uh, the bottleneck of, uh, of, uh, of, of the COP26, uh, one of them is uh, going to be how much uh, we, are, we are ready to start acting already during this decade. There has been classically thinking that uh, perhaps in the future something may, may happen, but, uh, but it's, it's obvious that we have to start uh, acting uh, already now if we want to reach the low limit of uh, Paris Agreement. Uh, and, uh, and this is one of the challenges that uh, the, both the UK government and, uh, and we at the United Nations are, are, are elaborating uh, and encouraging countries to, to raise their ambition level. So n now we are heading uh, towards uh, two to th uh, three degrees warming instead of 1.5 to two degrees, and uh, and, and it, it, it has been shown clearly that uh, it would be benef beneficial for the for the welfare of uh, us uh, human beings and welfare of, uh, of 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 the biosphere and the planet uh, to, 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 to 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 reach even the low limit of uh, Paris Agreement 1.5 degrees. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor Tallis, for that answer. Um, I just wanted to ask anybody else want to ask any further questions. Uh, again, I go back, I think, to Laurent uh, from Swiss News Agency. You want to come back on a question, Laurent? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, do you believe that the multiplying prevalence of fires and floodings in the last two years in the, the middle of the, the pandemic contributed to that growing uh, uh, consciousness from member states? Thank you. Yeah, that's a good question. We were a little bit afraid that uh, this pandemic uh, would have been shadowing the, uh, the, the even bigger problem, uh, long-term problem, climate change. And uh, it's important to compare uh, COVID uh, crisis and, uh, and the risk related to climate change. Uh, 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 because of COVID, we had uh, very dramatic uh, uh, impacts on our everyday life and uh, all these lockdowns and uh, and so forth uh, and with uh, to be successful in climate mitigation we would need uh, changes in our everyday life uh, which wouldn't be very dramatic uh, they, they, they would be actually fairly fairly moderate and uh, uh, but if we fail with uh, climate mitigation we would have a permanent uh, problem for at least hundreds or even thousands of uh, Yes, uh, and, uh, and and the both economic and uh, human well-being uh, effects would be much more dramatic than this uh, this COVID pandemic, which has been uh, hit, hitting us uh, all in a dramatic way. So, so that's something to to keep in mind. But the good news is that uh, that despite of this uh, attention to pandemic, uh, uh, countries have come out uh, with. Uh, more ambitious uh, plans to mitigate uh, that that's the case in in um, in european union uh, usa uh, uh, g7 countries in general uh, including japan and china has come out with uh, with ambitious plans and and, and also uh, fossil fuel dependent uh, economies like saudi arabia and, and russia have also indicated that they would like to uh, aim at the becoming carbon neutral by 20 2050. So this is uh, very positive news, uh, but uh, but we have to speed up uh, this uh, this mitigation efforts to be successful. Thank you very much uh, for those questions. It doesn't appear we have any more um, questions from the floor. So I'd like to thank uh, all of the journalists and uh, and everyone following on UN uh, Web TV uh, for this live stream event on the United Science 2021. The report will be available um, on the WMO website, and uh, we also would thank our partners of United in Science. Um, the report will also be brought into the discussions uh, with world leaders, uh, with the UN Secretary General in advance of the General Assembly, and we also hope to use the results of this as we move in towards uh, COP26 uh, Glasgow meeting in early November. So thank you very much for joining um, this morning, and we wish you uh, a nice day. Thank you.